Corporate Finance OneNote Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in OneNote related to the calculation of return on investment, otherwise known as ROI. Get ready. It's time to take a chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you would like to follow along in OneNote, you're not required to do so, but if you have access to it and would like to, we are in the 312 return on investment ROI section under the practice problems tab. Closing this back up, we're going to have our information up top. We're then going to calculate our profit margin and then our net income will be estimated and then our return on investment that's going to be our objective is for the return on investment so a quick explanation what what is going to be the return on investment typically when we're thinking about an investment project we'll be thinking about a return on investment so this is something you'll often hear when you're thinking about like managerial decision uh, what should we do should we should we take on a new project or what type of new project should we take on which one should we do a b or c or if you're thinking about stocks and whatnot investments then you're thinking about oftentimes you'll hear the term uh, return on investment the, de the general formula that you could apply return on investment would happen when you have an investment that you're going to put down in order to generate revenue in the future so in order to generate revenue in the future you have to put some money down at that at this point in time so when you put the money in at this point in time, we're going to call that here our capital investment. That's how much we're putting in. Now, when you think about that at this point in time, you're thinking about basically the assets that you're, you're putting in. You kind of think of that as basically a balance sheet item. Because if, if you were to think about this from balance sheet and income statement, that would be your assets that you would put in to an investment. And then you're comparing that to how much you're going to make. So the income that you're going to be making from that investment which means now you're talking about something that's an income statement type of thing performance meaning how well did we do what did we do over the year how much did we generate from this initial investment in a year so that's going to be this is going to be one calculation that we can use from performance and just remember that we could use multiple calculations to measure basically performance that that is going to be happening basically over time so this is one we whenever we think about these ratios you always want to remember you're kind of looking into the future which is a fog we don't really know the ratios are going to help us to basically look at different angles through the fog and the more viewpoints that we can look at the better picture we will then have the better we'll be able to make a decision also when you're thinking about the ratio analysis remember that that any truth that there is any truth can be used to manipulate because people will use truth in order to give partial information a half truth in order to push a different a, a viewpoint that they want you can do that with normal facts you know with words you can do that with rhetoric you can do that with with uh, statistics right with ratios the same way so you want to be able to uh, if someone's telling you something based on one particular viewpoint and they're not expanding the lens at all by looking at this with multiple views then you got to be suspicious and then you also want to be able to look at things from for multiple views and say no i think you're distorting the picture because you're only considering this you know from one particular angle so just keep that in mind whenever you're doing there's not like one ratio that's gonna you know make the right answer in a test question there will be but because you're doing test questions but in practice of course there's not typically going to be one ratio where you say oh well that ratio says it the case is closed and that's what we do right you're you got to look at multiple ratios and then uh, make the make the best decision you can with unknowns in the future that's the point so what the, the decision we'll have here should we expand to new products so question should we have a new product or not so we're going to say assets to support the expansion is a five hundred thousand dollars so we're going to say it's going to cost five hundred thousand dollars down for our business up front so that's going to be the capital investment that we're going to have to put in, into play the estimated revenue we're going to say is two million forty thousand that's going to be the revenue though that's the top line that's performance now over a year but what's going to be the net income what we really want to know is the net income because that's really what we're generating that we get to keep basically uh, over the time period that we can then compare to the initial investment now we can get to the net income typically revenue minus expenses on an income statement but here we're going, to, we're going to start getting used to this profit margin percent so this profit margin percent we calculated last time it's it's useful to be able to use it to kind of give a, a really you know rough estimate from our estimated revenue so we can say hey look if we're going to make uh, this much revenue we're just going to use our profit margin percent to a related business for, for perhaps for a rough estimate as to 
what we think the net income will be, what the bottom line will be. So it's useful to understand this profit margin percent in terms of how to calculate it and then how to use it to calculate net income as well. So let's let's think about that down below. So to get to the return on the investment calculation down below, we're going to need to get to the net income. We need to calculate net income. To do that, we're going to do the profit margin. We're going to use the profit margin calculation to get there. Now, this profit margin calculation, you would like to use this profit margin percent both ways. You would like to understand it in terms of how to calculate the net income and how to calculate the profit margin percent. So if they gave us the percent here, we could calculate the net income directly. But it's quite possible that in this ratio and in many other ratios that you, you don't really know how to go back and forth or find the unknown. And, and in other words, you don't really want to think in your mind all the time with these ratios in terms of, well, how do I use the ratio to get to the unknown, which I know is part of the ratio and try to figure out and think of a whole new formula to do so. So for example, the general rule, and, and this formula you probably want to because we'll be using it oftentimes to do that, but, and it's a, it's a quick ratio, but in general, last time, for example, we figured out how to calculate the profit margin percent, which is net income divided by the revenue. So we might know that, and, but we don't know, we don't know what net income is in this case. So what you want to do first then, if that's the, if that's the case, is you want to just think of the formula that you know even though the, the unknown is in the formula somewhere and then use your algebra. So in other words, we would take the net income, which would be unknown. We have it here, but we're going to assume it's unknown right now, right? We're going to divide that by the revenue that's going to be generated, the estimated revenue here. And that would then give us our profit margin, but we already know the profit margin. So then we can use this calculation. This would be the unknown divided by the estimated revenue would give us the profit margin. Once we write it out in this format, then I would write it out in the algebraic format so that you could then apply your algebra to it, which would be X divided by the uh, 2,040,000 equals 0.04 because we got to move the decimal over two places, 0.04. Then you can use your algebra to solve for uh, X, which would get you to the 81,600. Uh, so that way you can back into this. In other words, I would recommend thinking about it in this format. Obviously, if you know the profit margin, think of it first as putting the unknown. I usually think about these formulas vertically instead of algebraically because it's easier for me to see them in this format. Then put them into an algebraic format if I need to. This is where paper and pencil can be useful because then I can apply the standard algebra to solve for the unknown as long as you have some only one unknown then you should be okay as opposed to trying to think about it this way where you're going to say okay i know this formula the profit margin possibly i know this but i want to think about it in terms of calculating the end the end number which is net income so that means well in in your head if you don't if you don't if you haven't memorized this to do this in your head, you'd be thinking, okay, I got to do this. You're basically trying to do the algebra in your head, or you're trying to memorize another formula as if there's another formula. It's the same formula. It's just algebraically different. So you might, you might want to just put it in this way and then do this. And then if you did the algebra and, or once you start to do this a, a few times with this particular formula, it would be, it would be useful to know both ways, right? Now I can say, all right, well then the estimated revenue uh, a year is the 2,040,000. If I multiply that times the 40%, I mean the 4%, that's going to give us the uh, 81,600. So it will give us the 81,600. If we take the 2,040,000 times 4% or 0.04, and that'll give us the 81,600. So again, you in this particular item, you want to know it both ways. You want to be able to calculate it uh, this way too. But I'm just pointing out in, in future formulas, whenever they give you, for example, the profit margin percent, and you know the profit margin percent to get to that number, then you're probably going to write, want to write that down, mark the unknown and figure it out as a general rule in a, in a practice problem. And typically in practice too, if you need to figure something like that out. So then we, now we can do the return on investment, the return on investment or ROI, we're going to take the net income which is the income statement or performance number, bottom line of basically the income statement now. That's how we did over a year's worth of time or how we estimate that we will do 81,600. We're gonna compare that to the investment, how much capital investment we had to put in in order to generate that revenue for one year. And that'll give us our return on investment. So if we take the return on investment, 
we're going to be picking this up and say now we've got the 81600 divided by what we put in to get that and that's going to be the 16.32 if we move the decimal over two places we would have 16.32 uh, percent now then of course the question well is that good or bad i mean what does that mean the return on investment notice again this is only one calculation that you might have if, if, in if you're deciding whether or not to put the 500,000 into this project here you might be comparing this project to other projects in which case you can compare the roi to other projects to see which one has the higher uh, return on investment and you can do so even with projects that don't have the same dollar amount of investment they might have different varying dollar amounts of investment and you could still measure the rate of return on the investment at least after the after the first year now if that rate of return is constant that can be a, a good in indicator as well but notice it it you're you're comparing one year's of return in this case on compared to basically the uh, initial investment so if it's a more complex return if you think the return is going to vary from year to year you might need to do a more a more detailed kind of a, of analysis and figure out what the net in income or project the net income for multiple years you might need to take in into account time value of money and whatnot so this is just one tool one ratio that you can then use to to do uh, some comparisons you this return also might be good depending on the type of project that we're working on so so if if we're comparing this to like industry standards or something like that or standard return uh, for a similar project then that's what's going to give this number more meaning within the context of what we're comparing it to